What's happening, Wolves fans? What's going on? Man, oh man. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Four Wolves Takes for you, boy. Artist Woods is here to bring you four fresh Minnesota Timberwolves takes in all honesty. <sighs> One of these takes ain't so fresh, but it needs to be said again, and maybe again, and again, and again, until it's done. At this point, man, I've been trying to dance around it. I've said it in the first you know, episode of the season, and I'm like, I ain't going to keep bringing it up no more because I don't want to beat a dead horse. But at this point, man, I'm going to have to. Like, I don't have a choice. Y'all see the thumbnail. Y'all know where I'm going. You know, a few more of these takes, y'all might be scratching your head like, bro, what do you mean? Let me explain. It's just my thoughts right now sitting at 9 and 10. It's just my thoughts, man. It's just a lot going on. Vibes off. We got to get into it, man. We got to get into it. Take number one. Again, y'all know where I'm going. Rob Dillingham. I think the boy deserves at least 18 minutes a game. I think he deserves at least 18 minutes a game. Rob Dillingham has shown you in limited time what he can do. He's shown you in limited time what he can do. Rob Dillingham has given you a 14-point game, a 12-point game. He's given you a game where he's a plus 26 on the court. He's shown you the ball handling, the facilitating, the scoring ability, right? He's shown you the passing ability. He's shown you everything he can show you in limited time. And when I look at the Wolves right now, I see a team that at times lacks organization, especially when Mike Conley is not in the game, right? The ball sticks way too much. Anthony Edwards is oftentimes working so hard to get looks. And this is why this was such a big thing for me this offseason, getting another playmaking guard, another guy who can shot create for himself and others, mainly shot create for others, because Anthony Edwards is always stuck doing that. You got to shot create for others, and then you got to shot create for yourself on top of that, which is why a lot of times at the end of these games, he looks gassed. Like, he don't have it. And it's because he has to work so hard. I think that's a part of the reason why he's not going to say this. This is just me. This is just me. Just Artist Woods. I think that's a part of the reason why he's shooting so many threes and not attacking the basket as much as he was. Not only because I worked on my three-point shot and I'm a really good three-point shooter now, but because, man, this is one of the few ways I can kind of preserve myself a bit. <laughs> like, in a way, in a way. Just my thoughts. Just my thoughts. But what Rob Dillingham brings to the table is what the Wolves need. They need energy. They need playmaking. They need scoring. The defense has looked better in the last few games, I will admit. But I think this, this team can move more in an offensive. I think it can move more into an offensive team. Man, you have players that can score, but they got to be put in position to score. Right now, Rob Dillingham is being done such a disservice. Why trade up to draft him and not play him? That's the part I don't, I, that's not clicking with me. Why trade up to draft him and then sit him on the bench when you see him out there? And yeah, he's going to make rookie mistakes. Yeah, he's going to turn the ball over here and there. But I mean, we just saw the Clipper game yesterday. We just saw. We just saw turnovers by everybody on the team. I think at least everybody had at least two turnovers. I think the only one who didn't have two turnovers was Nas Reed. And I got to go double check the box score. Like, without... A floor general out there. They are all over the place. Even when Mike Conley at times, they're all over the place. And to the Mike Conley point, right? This also preserves Mike Conley. Giving Mike, uh, giving Rob Dillingham more playing time also preserves a guy that you will need down the stretch. You will need Mike's veteran leadership down the, down the stretch to make the playoffs, in the playoffs, to go on a run. You need it. Without him, you are in trouble. So you need to do everything you can to preserve the man. It's just, I try to bring y'all fresh takes, bro. I try, I try to get y'all fresh takes every week, bro. But this one, this take, I know y'all have heard, but man, like what else can we say? Like, it's just the obvious that I cannot gloss over. It's, 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 it's insane to me. And I know he likes defense. Like, yeah, okay. There's a lot of point guards out here that like defense. I'm not going to go down the list of players, but watch Watch some games. Watch and see how many point guards out here locking up the best offensive player or locking up uh, opposing point guards on a night-to-night -night basis. 
Like, take number two, gonna throw y'all off, but I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it while we own this topic of playing young, youthful talent. I think you should bring THJ back. I think you should bring him back. I don't even think he should have went to the G League. I don't even think TSJ should have went to the G League. Now, I know, I know, some of y'all is looking at this, y'all going to scoff at it, y'all going, man, this he is tripping today. He tripping today. No, nah, no, nah, it's just, it's just, it's how I feel. And it's how I feel when I watch TSJ play. The man can play another first-round draft pick, granted, late-round draft pick, but the man can play. The man averaging 33 points a game in the G League right now. Only played two games, but he's averaging 33 points a game. He is a bucket. He's athletic. Right? He's big. Like, to me, at times, not only do you lack another playmaker, sometimes you lack another score, another guy to just go get a bucket. Just go get a bucket. Now, I'm not saying TSJ got to go out there and play 18 minutes a game or really replace someone's minutes. I'm not saying all that. I'm just saying in spurts, I might give him six, seven minutes. Hey, let's see what he could do. Because I know he can score. And one thing that bothers me is during the summer league, right? Most of us sat and watched the summer league and was like, yo, TSJ, he NBA ready. Rob Dillingham is the one that's oh, going to take a little time. He's small. He's smaller guard. He getting moved around a little bit on the floor. Okay. You know, he's got to get, he's got to get used to being a natural point guard, right? Like we were looking at Rob as the guy that's like, yo, he's got to, he might have to develop a little bit more, but TSJ, he's ready. Like, he ready to step right in to be a contributor. That's how we looked at it. Or am I tripping? Was I the only one that looked at him like that? I don't think I was. I mean, I follow some of y'all on Twitter. I see your tweets. A lot of us was like, yo, I don't even, I, last couple games, I don't need to see him play no more. How do we get from, I don't, need, I don't even need to see him play anymore in the summer league to, yeah, put him in the G League while the Wolves struggle. It'd be one thing if the Wolves were balling right now, but the Wolves struggling. Just beat the Clippers, but 9-10, nine and eight, nine and 10, you're struggling. Why not? Why not? Like, I I don't know, y'all. I think that this team is in position with young talent that can help them win games. But if they don't use the young talent to help spell for Mike Conley, to help spell for Anthony Edwards at times, to help spell for Jaden McDaniel sometimes, like, if they don't use that young talent, by the end of the season, the team going to be worn out just trying to stay afloat. You got a tough schedule coming up. You got the Lakers coming up. You got the Clippers coming up again. You got the Warriors coming up, then playing great basketball. Like, and it's still very early in the season. You know how All Star break in here, don't come in here and give you a, a bit of a break. But I'm just saying, like, this youthful talent, I think, will help. They won't be perfect by any stretch. They will have bad, bad, bad offensive nights, bad turnovers, bad defensive nights. But what are we seeing right now? Bad turnovers, bad offensive nights, bad defensive nights. And we're seeing a team that, and said it best, doesn't even listen to their head coach. A head coach that was just in the conference finals, they don't seem to want to listen to at times. Which brings me to take number three. Which brings me to take number three. I love Anthony Edwards' post-game honesty. I love his post-game honesty. Because at least he's telling us what's going on. We could watch the game all day and be like, yo, this is weird, that's weird, this weird, that's weird. But we got a guy, a star player, that's willing to just let us know What's going on? Yo, we we soft right now. We're not playing with no energy right now. I didn't come to the table with no energy. And I think we all look at Anthony Edwards as the guy on this team. Like he's the man. He is he's the guy. He got the the max the max contract. He's got the Adidas shoes. He's the heart of the city right now. You know what I mean? Like he he's 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 the guy. Especially now without Cat being here. He is the guy. Undisputed. He is the guy. We're all looking at him to be the leader as well. And I think this is his way of leading. Right now, this is his way of leading. We all seen legendary players from the past do the same thing. Call their teammates out. Not to embarrass them, but to wake them up like, yo, what are we doing out here? And I think Anthony Edwards is doing the same thing. Now, some of the time, sometimes the, the commentary could be a little repetitive. Like, all right, what are we going to do about this next game? I don't want to hear you say this. And then the next game, it's the same thing. Like we've seen several times this year. You say you lack energy, lack effort, will be better, and then you come out the very next game and lack energy and effort, and you're turning the ball over, and you're still not listening to the coach, and all of this stuff is going on. Like, But at the end of the day, it's nice to see him calling guys out. A lot of superstars, not a lot, but there are some superstars that come out, and they dance around questions. Yeah, we just got to be better. 
Yeah, we just, you know, we're not playing good ball. I mean, obviously, we know you're not playing good ball. We see it. Why aren't you playing good ball? At least he's telling you we ain't playing because we soft. Like, <laughs> at least at least he he calling a spade a spade. And I, and I do like that. Now, Anthony Edwards ain't playing to the standard I thought he would play at so far either. I do want to point that out. He's not playing to the standard I thought he would play at either so far. Right? Still shooting the three ball well, but his efficiency is not the greatest. I think it is in part because he be gassed. That's just me. But Anthony Edwards, I think Phil said it on the previous episode of Flagrant, of Flagrant House. He has definitely been underwhelming. He has definitely been underwhelming. I was one that said, hey, MVP. Best player in the world started next season. We gonna need more from him too. But I need this coaching staff to help him out, give him easier looks, give him reasonable breaks, help the man out, help the man out. And the last thing I want to say today for my final take of the day, it's going to sound crazy coming from me because if you follow me, you've seen me tweet by now. I cannot stand when the, when the Timberwolves, when a team goes on the run against the Timberwolves and the Timberwolves call a timeout and the very next play out of the timeout, they run a play for Rudy Gobert. I just think that may be, and I'm not, listen, I'm not Coach Finch. I'm not there in practice. But at times, as, as just a basketball fan, somebody that watches and studies the game, I just feel like at times that is the silliest thing to do. And, 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 and it feels like, just eye test wise, I don't know the percentages. I don't know. But it just feels like it never works. Like it ends up in a turnover or a bad shot or a missed shot. And then the other team goes on a fast break, scores. And then it's like, all right, we still trying to stop momentum right now. So this this next take might throw you for a loop. But I do think it applies right now. Feed Rudy a bit. A bit. Emphasis on a bit. Right? Now, we all saw the game against Toronto. Where Rudy Gobert... Dives into the paint, calls for the ball, and Julius waves him off. Get out of the way, bro. You're not getting the ball. I'm attacking the basket. I don't know the backstory behind that. I don't know if it was a play designed for Rudy Gobert. Or I'm sorry, a play designed for Randall and Rudy dived in the way or the opposite. It could have been maybe a play designed for Rudy and Rudy like, hey, run the play. And Randall's like, no, nah, I got this. I got the matchup I want. No, nah, I'm taking this. I don't know. All I know is there was some frustrating and just some it was it was some frustration and some some miscommunication. Rudy kind of pouted, got a three second call, which was egregious, and that is what it was. It just it just matches the vibes, bro. It just it, it matches everything Anthony Edwards has said in his post game press conferences, and it just matches kind of how we feel about the team right now. Like, yo, what's good? What's going on, right? Rudy Gobert, his shots per game are down right now. His points per game are down right now. One thing that the Wolves did very well last season, very well, sometimes a bit too much to my liking, you know what I'm saying? But they did it. At times, they fed Rudy the ball, bro. Screen and roll, whatever they needed to do, easy buckets at the rim, they fed him the ball. And I've said this time and time again. I'm going to say it again right now. Sometimes, even for the best defenders on the floor, there's nothing like an easy offensive bucket that gets them going, that gets the, the engine going. Now, if you winning games and Rudy isn't touching the ball, right? But again, you're winning games. Maybe he don't have that moment with Julius Randle. But the problem is they're losing games. They don't have energy and effort. They're not making shots. And so in situations like this, a guy who's been in the game a very long time, Former defensive player of the year multiple times, right? A guy who has had an impact on the Wolves winning games, right? He, just like everyone else on the roster, is going to feel like, hey, I can also contribute on offense to help us win games. We've seen him have big offensive explosions last year. We, in the year before, we've seen him have games where he's like, look up and Rudy got 20, 25 points. It don't happen often, but it's happened. And so I'm sure in the back of Rudy's mind, Maybe I'm not Anthony Everts when I touch the basketball, or I'm not, you know, Nas Reed when I touch the ball. I'm not Julius Randle when I touch the ball, but I can get the ball down in the paint and score. I could seal a guy off and get an easy dunk or layup. I could catch a lot sometimes at the rim and score, right? Like, I'm sure he feels like that. One thing I would say is just every now and then give him those touches. 
to start a game. Give him the ball. Get him going early. Give him a few touches to start. Give him a few touches to start a quarter, to start a fourth. Give him Just give him a few touches. Give him a few opportunities. That will keep him engaged. Now, again, Rudy is a veteran. It shouldn't take this. But, again, it's basketball at the end of the day, people. One thing, and I'll leave you all with this. One thing Kendrick Perkins said, the 2008 Boston Celtics team. One thing he said was, A, one thing Doc Rivers did well, he kept me engaged. How? Because at the start of just about every big-time game, he fed me first. This team has Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett. At the time, they got James Posey and Eddie House. Those guys aren't starting, but I'm just bringing up other guys that can score the basketball. Rondo could even score. Very young at the time, but can still score from time to time before you know he really became Rondo. Maybe like, I don't know, 2010-ish, where he really kind of took over and may have been the best player on the team. right? All I have to say, you had other options. You had other options you could feed the ball to and get the game going, but we're going to go to Kendrick Perkins early because we know we need him engaged defensively and we need him getting rebounds. We need him hustling. And the way to get him engaged early, get him an easy bucket, get him a lob at the rim, get him a dunk. Boom. Now he's locked in. And I think that rule applies to Rudy at times, bro. Just every now and then. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. I'm not saying that. But every now and then, here you go, Rudy. He got the seal. Here you go. Give him an opportunity. Maybe he scores. Maybe he doesn't. But that's how you avoid those moments, especially with a new teammate. Because maybe that don't happen if it's Cat. You didn't play with Cat for a couple years, right? Maybe it doesn't happen if it's Anthony Edwards. Y'all didn't play together for a little bit. And like, move, he lied. I got you. But with a, a new teammate, that can happen from time to time because you haven't built that camaraderie and that chemistry just yet. So that's all I got, man. That's all my takes for the day. It's, uh, man, I I almost had a take today that said I'm starting to lower my expectations. I'm not ready to do that just yet. Not yet. I'm not yet. I'm not lowering expectations too much. Maybe slightly because I say those going to win 60 games. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. But I'm not lowering that. Western Conference Finals, NBA Finals expectation because I do think they can write the ship. I still believe in it. But man, they they not making me look good at all right now. We shall see how they look over the next week or so against some high-level competition. Maybe they play better, play up to the competition, and, and get this ball rolling the right way. Only time will tell. But I know one thing that will help is getting Rob Dillingham in the basketball game. I will catch y'all on the next episode of Four Wolf Takes.